in this intimate gathering. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Uh, this afternoon's presentation is by Bob Good. Uh, the topic of the conversation is to found and fund an endowment for the science of reincarnation. Uh, Bob comes out of two areas of research. Uh, the first part of his life he was doing military research and then with major pharmaceutical companies. When he uh, started to retire, uh, Bob told me that he started reading every piece of science he could get a hold of. He had a very eclectic view of the world. And what he saw in his reading was that there are parts of the landscape where he could do great good, but it just wasn't happening. So with his studies of, of science, uh, and in particular, this idea of reincarnation. It just seemed to be the most logical outcome of this, uh, his logical process and the scientific process. So he's gonna tell us a little bit about that today and to talk about this endowment. So would you please welcome Bob Good and give him a nice hand. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank um, the organization for having me and allowing me to give this presentation. Uh, today I'm going to explain the science of reincarnation and then we're going to do the science of reincarnation and by the end of it you're going to understand that not only are you already doing it but you're qualified to teach it and to grow it and it's happening anyway. A science is made up of disciplines and in this case I'm here at the International Association of Near-Death Studies and we have the doctors and the experiencers but there are children who remember prior lives being studied at the University of Virginia. And I would submit to you that there are common data points in the backgrounds of both groups. I would also submit that they should be studied collectively for those common data points. And when you're treating someone who has had a near-death experience, that same form of treatment can be applied to those children who've had a similar experience but there is no group or organization offering them treatment. So here you have the skilled practitioners and there you have children in need and there is no cross point. Now, I don't want to give the impression that I'm friends with Jim Tucker, who's at the University of Virginia, but he and I are communicating and what Jim tells me, he sent me a paper that shows that he views the common data points between near-death experiences, and children who remember prior lives. And there's an intersection. I would submit there's an intersection again between past life regression. Because what's occurring is if we distill a common narrative, we build an image of a landscape. Now, you already know the landscape. The experiencers in your organization have been there. Okay? But there is no cohesion. Now, Jim says that the work that Weiss has done down at the University of Miami is more clinical than research, but he accepts the work that was done at SRI and the Princeton University, the Pear Lab, um, as being groundbreaking. So what we have is the first three disciplines that are anecdotal, there, there, there's proof, as, as, as offered by this, the, the, the uh, uh, keynote address this morning. We have clinical proof, but we're not teaching that cohesively, and we're not connecting the dots. I had a chance to talk to the nursing students here yesterday from the University of Texas, just briefly, and they said that this was all new to them, um, but they were viewing it as though in a tunnel and not seeing the wider range. Now, if I was going to fund a study between three organizations that were going to examine common data points, I would probably have to get endowments from different organizations. And um, boy, I'll tell you something, filling out grant requests is, is, is um, it's like root canal. I don't want to go there. Um, but if each of those groups 
filmed their own 90-second Kickstarter video. It would look something like this. Hi, I'm Joe and I'm from um, University of Virginia and we are asking collectively, the two doctors and I, for $21,000. $7,000 for each organization so each of us can set up an organization to share common data. And so begins the funding because once you have that, then the next step is a Kickstarter video for probability studies because now you've created the database. But without further support scientifically that this would be a logical conclusion, that would probably die there. So what I want to add to the algorithm that we're building on this science is what we really are and that's the human biome. You look at me, 50% of my cells are outside organisms. There's bacteria in my gut, there's bacteria in my mouth. Of the 50% of the cells that remain, I trade every atom out every two years. My skin sheds every six weeks, my stomach lining goes every, every day. Um, the enamel in my teeth and, in my, and the calcium in my bones trades out every two years. So where am I? Well, what we've found is that apparently I, my memory is stored in a holographic pattern or a waveform. Now, I could go into the science of that, but let me just explain it that when Clara Sylvia had a major accident and received a double lung and heart transplant, she began to want chicken McNuggets. She started looking at pretty brunette girls and she suddenly developed a taste for beer, which she always hated. And on further examination, the young man who died in the accident that gave her that had a brunette girlfriend and ate chicken McNuggets and beer just before he died. So how do we pass memories from body to body? And, and it would be a cheap way of saying, oh, look, there's proof we reincarnate already. What we're really tracking is the entire position of the science at the moment and what its development means and why it's not developing. Um, we are t untying the code of life and uh, I want to mention J. Craig Ventner who in the early 2000s or the late 1990s uh, wrote a code for a self-replicating organism on his computer simply with um, the uh, DNA sequence, the four chemicals, GNT, whatever they are. And he put, mixed all that in the bag and he had a self-replicating algae. Uh, Ventner went on from there to found a hundred million dollar institute that studies this. But from that point, I want to I apologize for jumping around. The hierarchy of neural networks, which we're coming down through the body, does not end at the neuroaxial level, okay? It incorporates subcellular mechanisms. When it reaches the nanometer stage, the number of elements in the body exceeds the ability for the quantum material to receive it. And that is the point at which we see this difference. Um, we, see, we shift from our physicalist selves to our non-local selves. So, what's non-local consciousness? Clairvoyance has been proven. Your experiencers go out of their body. If I am clairvoyant and I see something at a distance, We've now proven that with DNA. That non-local consciousness is what your experiencers are experiencing. We act like all matter does as a particle in a wave. It's called a wavicle. I have a particular state. I'm in front of you right now. 
But my ability to have a wave state and reach outside my body has been proven and documented. And now we are developing protocols to actually chase that through science. So I want to I want to stop and I want to explain three experiments and I want to explain how this works. The first experiment is 1972. Ohio State is giving rabbits a high cholesterol diet to induce heart disease. All the rabbits in all the groups are getting heart disease except one group. They don't react. Ohio State runs the, runs the, the um, experiment again. The same thing occurs. What they found out was the lab animal tech who was feeding the rabbits felt bad for the rabbits. And he was petting them before he fed them. And that alone prevented them from getting the heart disease. Other universities ran studies to match it. They got the same results. Fast forward 20 years. We're in Paris now. Um, the, Par the Paris doctors are doing a test with a Hartley guinea pig heart. They have harvested the heart and they've put it on an architecture used in heart transplants to keep it alive and beating. And they applied vasodilators and vasorestrictors to make the heart speed up and slow down. The heart did exactly what it was supposed to do. But they weren't using chemicals. What they did was they took the chemical and they digitized it. And through the use of a transducer and a sound card, they shot the waves of the digitized chemical at the heart, and the heart responded as though it were receiving the chemical. The third experiment. Jean Archdeberg's therapeutic intention experiments was that she put a patient in an MRI machine and she had healers in another room totally removed send their intent to the patients in the MRI machine. What we've proved with this and other studies is that areas activated during the experimental procedure included the anterior and middle cingulate area, the precunus and the frontal area, which means I just put somebody in an MRI machine, I intended for them, and I saw their physiology change. Now, what this means is, is that this has to be communicated to your healers and your nurses. Because the treatment of your patients when they have an NDE, particularly if it's a new experience, actually begins before the, the healers enter the room. And it can continue afterwards with measurable results. Now, I, I can go on with the proof of this, but I really want to hit my time numbers. There's other stuff we have to do. So, Based on what we heard this morning, and based on the fact that we've proven non-local consciousness, we're working with it in the lab, the science is ongoing, but we're not calling it that. We're calling quantum biology, we're calling, calling it the neurosciences. NDEs are the only event where the person has an experience while the brain is clinically dead. Okay? So, this group are the perfect teachers and the perfect scientists to teach this, but it's not cohesive in any way. And it's not taught as an organization. There's, there's a bunch of re reasons and resistors for that. Physicians and physicists really don't talk to each other. When physicists speak, they don't really say it in plain English. I started to devolve into reading you numbers at one of the reports, and your eyes got tired. But when I brought you back, with the rabbit, we again gained interest. That's part of the problem the physicists have. They've explained it very, very well. They, oh, geez, my admiration is, is it, it has no limits for what they've done. So it needs to be cohesively explained, and you need to say, to the three groups that I mentioned, the near-deathers, the children, and the past life regression, listen, this is the common narrative of what you're going to experience. Prepare them, teach them, and treat them. But when you build that common narrative, you've done an interesting thing. 
you've created an agreed upon reality. And there are resistors to that. And the resistors are fundamental radical theologies who advance their own idea and there is no narrative that is logic driven and fact based, much less taught. So I, I want to show you just how powerful the information is that you can be. I want to show you a high school textbook Um, this is this is high school textbook in Pakistan. That's the educational level of my enemy. If I'm going to send my child to fight, at least let me send them where their death is meaningful or there's something on the line. These people are being taught this by people who don't, probably don't know much more anyway. You know, I, I saw a study in, in 19, comparing our IQs with the IQs of the people in 1900. And the result of the study was that the, all the people in 1900 were challenged and if, we, and if we based that scale, we would all be gifted. And it really, it's really unfair and the study concludes that, but, but what it does point out is that there is a quanta of consciousness that has a leading edge and a trailing edge in terms of intellect. And the leading edge loses resources if it doesn't bring the trailing edge up with it. And that can only be done through education. So if you do that and you provide a common narrative, we have just shifted power structures in politics, and religion. Let's talk about what religions, how religions might react to a science called reincarnation. And I, I have to say that it needs to be the science of reincarnation. And now I'm speaking as, 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 a, as an old-timey salesman. You've got to know your audience. If I'm going to go and I'm going to try and change this person's mind and I want to be politically correct here and call it non-local consciousness, I'm not going to reach him. But if I use the term science and reincarnation, I have a whole population who have got it in their blood. They understand it. And it is part of their culture. And now, instead of a belief, it becomes something you can teach at the Indian Institute of Technology or at the Sorbonne. All righty? So, the problem religions have. First is we're providing scientific validations of their belief. There is an afterlife. You know, you have a near-death experience and you see a guide. They have a near-death experience and they see a seraph, an angel. Whatever, whatever it is, because it's their interpretation of it. Um, so you are providing valid scientific proof that their belief system has validity. And keep in mind, this science has to treat and respect all sciences the same because they are the receptacles of our wisdom traditions. Okay? So, if I look at Christianity, we were burning heretics at the stake, I don't know, you know, 800 years ago. Well, if I'm looking at the science of reincarnation, I got to be looking at it gener generationally, you know? I'm, I, I got 15 back, and, and what am I going to do with the next one? And how do I want to fix some of the problems that I have? So if I am going to start to truly make a change, then what really needs to be done is you need to address the religious hierarchy, which we're validating, and also our geopolitical structure. And I'm, I'm turning myself loose here to explain this entire concept because there are only about eight of us here. I figure it's safe. Okay? So first, we're, we're validating their scientific belief. The second is, for us, our experiencers, religion is transitive. Race is transitive. So is gender. 
So how do I enforce an apostasy law or women not driving in Saudi Arabia if the fact-based paradigm is telling me that that's not relevant? I now am able to say to an extremely hostile and religious group, Wahhabism, listen, guys, I certainly don't want to change. You've only been around 200 years. But the fact of the matter is, is scientifically, we've proven that your excessive beliefs do not stand logic. And it doesn't mean that you should give up Islam or give up the, the leader who created Wahhabism, whose name I don't know, and, 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 and I'm being respectful here. Uh, there's no intent for disrespect. But factually, we now can say that that's wrong. Bob, do you honestly think that you're going to say the science of reincarnation and you're going to have all these radicals go, ah, why didn't we think of that? The fact of the matter is, is that you're not going to change any of their minds. What you are going to do is to create the dialogue that is the instructional video for the children growing up, because that's the place of the movement. So now, I would like to see this dialogue in 15 years in the student union in France. I want to go fight for jihad. I want to get a group of guys together and we're going to go. And I want some kid to say, you know, I just took a course in the science of reincarnation. And, you know, I, I, my folks are Muslim and I'm Muslim, but I, I, I just don't really think that this, you know, we, we ought to look at this in a different way. And if you don't create the opportunity for that education now, this, that conversation is never going to happen. I already dealt with the third thing that the uh, religions are going to have to deal with because there is a common denomination of narrative that encompasses them all because if I look at the common narrative for the anecdotal disciplines, it's very close to the common narrative of the religions. Now, at one point I had the opportunity to, to, to uh, be in a business military group and I learned about the McDonald's theory of war. The McDonald's theory of war is, is that no two countries with McDonald's franchises have ever gone to war with each other. Now, th this, yeah, I know, but this represents a very real idea that common cultures don't fight each other, common understandings don't fight each other. Um, and what you're going to propagate, because Face it, you guys are going to put out a textbook for the science of reincarnation. It has to encompass all of this. It has to encompass the anecdotal. It has to encompass the religion. It has to encompass the political ramifications. Because if you're going to teach a science, then nothing can be left out. And that's what, that's what makes a science. But in terms of the scientists and the people who understand it, they are here in this organization better than they are anywhere else. And... Now it comes down to how do you implement this science to achieve the greatest good? How do, how do you build that? Before I leave this, I just want to let you read the, the bottom part because this is, this is, this is what the, these kids are reading. That's science. The next part of building your organization is building a brand. You need to have an image with a website on it, with t-shirts for sale and mouse pads for sale, and a place for people who want to learn more to go and read it in their language. So if we are going to come back to this website, those, those cartouches on the top are changing um, with Portuguese, Russian, Spanish. I, 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 I asked, I asked my, my, my group for the top 25. Um, so 
But that information, when they click on that, and you have a Hindu clicking on that, and he's in the Asian subcontinent, it, 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 it'll mix. There, with, there's, there's racial blending that's going on in the border areas all the time. So those ideas will propagate, and now you need to challenge other ideologies with proof that they re would accept. And I would posit that if I offered this to the Iranian Atomic Energy Commission or the Indian Institute of Technology, I would be developing new assets in at-risk areas in accordance with the National Preparedness Group. And what am I asking done? I'm asking you to teach what you know and heal people. Because if he's not fighting me, I don't have to send my kid to fight him. And the only way I can stop that fight is not with guns and bullets, but with education. And his people aren't capable of educating him. But the people in this room are capable of writing the textbooks so he can educate himself. Now, there are a couple of guys named Peter Diamatis Dim, and Stephen Coulter, and they wrote a book called Abundance. And um, in that book, there were some Indian businessmen who, it's, it's a tech center for them, but there's a wall surrounding the tech center, and one of the guys wanted to see what would happen if he put a computer in the wall that the kids could access. And these are, these are inner city uneducated kids and he put it in English. And it was articles about World War II, and then there was a test, and he came back and tested them. And the kids tested at the 55 or 60% level of understanding of what was on that computer, because kids help each other, in a language they didn't understand when they started. Now they found that the best paradigm for teaching people like this is three kids in front of one computer and a grandmother. The grandmother can be virtual. And the grandmother's job is to simply say, what are you doing? That's right. Oh, that's interesting. Good work. And the kids will educate themselves. Because one of the questions you're going to have about this is the delivery of this information. And we've got a long way to go for this because you've still got to write this. Okay? And you've got, you've got to write this with your best scientific minds in your best scientific way. Um, but if you write it, <laughs> if you will build it, they will come. Field of Dreams? Do I got it right? Kevin Costner? Yep. Okay? If you will write it, they will come. Okay? And you're the guys to write it because you feel it, you know it, you've been there, you study it. You're it, okay? And what are you doing? You're teaching the people who know how to do it, how to do it better and drawing on more resources. And you're teaching the people who don't even have a clue, like my friends at the University of Texas, who I only met one for 15 minutes. You're teaching him about the entire science. So when he goes in and somebody says, oh, I don't believe that crap. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go to these three studies and we'll show you scientifically how we put people in MRI machines and we intended for them. We showed you the, the physiological result. And all you have to do is listen to the keynote speaker this morning who is spot on. So in summary, and I think I'm finishing this a, uh, how much time do we have? Almost uh, half an hour. Almost a half an hour. Okay, I got 26 minutes. Well, we're moving along nicely. Um, you simply got to write it. You've got to write it to the best of your ability. And once you write it, there are other people in other places that are going to take it and try and heal systems that have no way of being healed now. And I don't know how I can explain the science of reincarnation any clearer. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is now open it up for questions. Oh, I have one question for you. I've got three questions for you before I go. We're going to start this way. Do you believe what you see? You're seeing all this stuff. Do you believe it? Do you see what you believe? I don't know what religion you are, but do you see? Do you see that religion in this world? And who are you going to believe? Me or your own eyes? So when I look at this with my own eyes, I see something that desperately needs to be done. And the benefit is going to far outweigh the effort to do it. And that if you begin the endeavor, that money will come easily to meet all the study needs and the grant needs for writing the book, or the textbook. Okay, there, that, that's what I've had to say. That's what I came all this way to say. Do I have any questions? Yes, sir. Well, I guess the, the question I have is like the whole the background of this, you know, um, 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 how old is this uh, uh, group? Is it just a started? Is it something you... This group right here? Yeah. This is my very messy website trying to do a lot of different things and wandering around. This is, this is not, this, your impression is that this website was created and it was straight path here. I started writing science fiction. So if we scroll down, uh, let, let, me, let me just show you some salient points about this so far. Join us at Reddit, Reincarnation Science. Okay, does, are, does anybody here by show of hands familiar with Reddit? I, the two young men in the room and me. Reddit is owned by Condé Nast and builds itself as the front page of the internet. It is totally free and anonymous to log on. And in that, they haven't figured out how to monetize it yet, but in that, they have hundreds of millions of people on the site. They have Reddit and the R. R is the um, Reddit designation. Um, and then you can start your own subreddit, like I started Reincarnation Science. Now, Reincarnation Science is a board that anybody could go on and post a question about Reincarnation Science, and anybody else can answer. It is not owned. I am a moderator for there, and I can have other moderators join me, or if I so desired, and a group like yours was going to say, we want to run that board so all our members could post and argue and talk and show pictures and all that other stuff, I would simply say, I'll, I'll step aside as a moderator, and now you have full ownership and control of it when, within whatever terms Reddit will give you. So in order to try and advance this cause, we have Reddit as a board to talk on. Um, this is just information. This is the branding. Uh, the science fiction. It can, you know, we're, we're among friends, right? Can we talk? Um, I, I ha I, I'm 66 years old. I figure I got 10 good years, 15 good years. At the end of my run, I'm going to play with this as much as I can, and then I'll give it to an organization that founds the science of reincarnation. It can have theirs in perpetuity. It can be theirs. Until I die, I'm on the ball field. It's as simple as that. I'm, I want to play. Um, that said, if you're really going to be successful with this, you've got to look at business models. And now, now, I'm, just, now I'm just another cold-blooded businessman. And I say, you know, Scientology ran a pretty interesting model. They ran up that to, to what? Uh, 50, 100 million, 500 million dollars, whatever, whatever it was. They did it with branding and connecting people and, and, and recognition, OK? So if you start to build a web where a kid is going to see the science of reincarnation or whatever brand you put out, because it's going to be your brand, and you're teaching it at the Indian Institute of Technology, that kid, if their t-shirts are cheap enough on the Indian market, is going to show up in a badabad wearing the science of reincarnation. That may, ha that may not happen right away. But if you build that brand with superheroes and rock music, you're going to kill it. And that's going to be my next thing. Because if you go up to the top, if we're going to build this, then a guy like me is going to say to people like you, listen, I want you to go to abundance. 
they'll do the Kickstarter programs, they'll do the videos, you've got the scientists, you've got the 501c3. They'll do the videos, let them give you the money, go do the work, print the textbook. I'm out of it, I'm gone, I'm done. They're, you don't need me. But if then, somewhere down the road, recognition builds for what you're doing with music where I can capture the young people so they're playing the music, and the music refers back to the work and the science that you've done, then I've created more pathways. And some of the pathways that I have to create are not in real friendly places. So the science of reincarnation, simply handled properly, can produce just a ton of good. Uh, okay, so that was that. I don't, know how I, I don't know how I got on that, and I don't mean to wander, and I mean to hit my numbers on time. Any other questions? Well, you know, um, I think it helps a lot. I mean, um, even if it uh, seems kind of um, a side info, I kind of I feel it's important because all this, it kind of, um, I, I'm still unfamiliar. Uh, and so, like, I think sharing, you know, your personal uh, journey of um, uh, what, what, uh, 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 got you interested in this? You kind of you heard of NDEs. You've heard All right, of I'd be glad to I'd be glad to explain that. Um, I, I was a reader when I was young. I read a lot of science fiction, and I felt that I could read. By the time I was in my early twenties, um, I felt I could write science fiction as good as some of the best were writing it. I didn't get that opportunity till I was started in my mid forties, and I wrote science fiction based on the science as I believed it was unfolding. How I could see the future unfolding. Um, a quick aside, Elon Musk has come out against artificial intelligent weapons. Artificial intelligence is projected to pass human intelligence in 2029. By 2035 you could have a condition where a drone flies over here, looks in the window, looks at me, and makes its own decision whether to shoot me. Now, if I don't change the attitudes of the people with the drones, if I don't come up with some kind of logical alternative to the madness I see right now, then, um, then I deserve to be shot. Uh, I lost my place well, again. Well, it, it, it's uh, helping us because, as, as you, you're saying, our technology uh, it keeps on uh, uh, getting uh, stronger and uh, more uh, powerful. And yet, the people who are owning it and in power and you know uh, wars um, aren't uh, thinking of all these. Um, are insulated from the pain of those suffering it. And um, Stefan Schwartz came out with an article a few years ago about in pregatory prayers, malintentions aimed at foreign leaders by intenders wanting to do harm. There is, okay, our geosynchronous satellites are at 30,000 miles above the Earth. We're the only country that has them. China, in the last month and a half, two months, fired a rocket at one of those, and the rocket, the, the geosynchronous orbit was here, and the rocket was just petering out right there, okay? Now this was a wake-up call for uh, the Defense Department, and we're now designing those geosynchronous satellites with uh, anti-weaponry and mobility. There is a tremendous, uh, there is an exponential advance in the technology, and we are lagging in our understanding of our own ability and, inter and interconnectivity with it. And so, um, So yeah, we, you, what you're doing, what you've learned, what you've seen, needs to be addressed to bring a greater understanding of what and who we are. Because if these weapons, if this, if this gets, if this turns loose, it's just going to get worse and worse. There has to be a change in attitude. And if I come here and I say I want, I want a textbook on the science of reincarnation to be done, why? 
rigorous scientific standards by the people who understand it best, you must understand that there's going to be a ge geopolitical consequence the minute you publish it. And once that occurs, um, then we'll address that. Right. So, so that is the coming science of reincarnation. We got any other questions? Because if not, I go ahead. I'm still missing a link here between um, the belief in reincarnation and how that is going to impact world peace. Uh, what it what it's going to do. Is, okay, if, if I come to the three of you and I have Muslim, Jew, and Christian and I want to talk to you about a reduction in hostilities, each of your own belief systems are set within yourself and I am not able to change those belief systems, okay? But if I come to you with a scientific proof that if you eat McDonald's burgers, you're all going to get cholesterol, what's going to be your response? He's going to keep eating them because he doesn't care anymore and you two guys are going to be healthier because you're going to stop because you understand the science. Okay? Suppose I come to you this, with the same kind of science-driven fact-based paradigm about your own belief system. Even if you don't believe me, your child now has four choices because he's going to hear you argue with me and he's going to understand why you think it's wrong except when he goes to school and all his friends are being doctors and he wants to get the girl and he realizes that it does make an impact on neuroanatomy and your biology teacher is explaining to you how you do it and he goes home and he looks at dad this science teaches he needs to honor and respect his father a child will lead him I think if I can interrupt go right ahead Suppose instead of a belief, I give it to you as a proof. I show you where your physicality ends, and now because I have better quantum equipment, I can actually pick up the vibrations and measure them. So when you're intending and producing a physical result, now in 10 years I'm going to have better MRI machines, and I'm going to be able to measure that vibration better. I, I have I was that you, guy but but there. but you've you've hit it though. If I have a belief system that will not let that information in, I'll never hear it. But if I grow up in a system where I have that as one of my choices, it has a chance to get in and go two or three generations out where this technology develops even more. And what what you've really done is is you've. You've expanded your reach. You're, you're now able to treat children. You're able to do past life regression. You have more acceptance of it. When somebody has a near-death experience, the nurse going into the room doesn't think, oh, I've never seen this before, but has the methodology and knows how to handle it. That's the things that you've got to take. That those are the steps you've got to take now. And while you're doing that, you need to teach it to make it a cohesive global protocol. And to get it global, you only got to make two phone calls. Yes, sir. I want to share what you told me the other day, Bob. Um, to answer you, Scott's question, I want to share what you told me the other day. So you got these Muslims sitting there and say, I'm going to go to jihad. But why should I? Because I understand reincarnation. I'm going to come back as a Jew. Right. Why would I? Why would I? 
or, or okay, I've got my wife and her burka. I'm going to come back as a woman. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so that, that, that needs to be taught in a cohesive way. Um, and, and in teaching this, you are insulting no one. You are advancing a logic, fact-based paradigm, and you're recognizing that the people who have these belief systems belong to a quanta of consciousness that is old and should be revered. But when some of these quantas of consciousness, when they, when, when, whether it's Christians, whether it's Jews, um, whether it's Muslims, it, it really doesn't matter. When they aberrate, there is a core of logic that's based on fact that, that they can be centered on. And so that's, that's, that's one of the driving reasons to do this kind of textbook and to call it the science of reincarnation. And when I'm dead, anything I've got is yours. Okay? And, until, until that time, I'm just going to have fun. Well, I have a question. And so you think that in your next uh, um, life, you'll keep on pushing? I, you know, I, I, I have not looked at past lives. I'm really not looking at next lives. There is this moment now, and in this moment, if I do this, I'll be satisfied. Um, there, I'll be satisfied. Yes, sir? Uh, one of the assumptions you're making is that, that this could be even, even uh, introduced because uh, I, I think what will happen is that there will be tremendous opposition to even, per, even disseminating this information. For example, to get it in, 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 uh, in the U U.S. public school systems, it won't fly. Get it into, hold on a second, yes. get it into Pakistan. You will never fly in a, in a Muslim country. Uh, in a, a strictly Roman Catholic system, it probably will not fly. In other words, it might it, you might be able to, to convince people in India, for example, or San Francisco, but, uh, but again, um, maybe not. But it, there will be tremendous opposition, and, and so you won't even get to first base. Right, well, act, actually, you're absolutely right with everything you said. If if I don't even bother with them. Really, the, the, place, the place to do it, yeah, the place to do it is on the internet. Uh, you want a printable, downloadable version in all languages. Now nobody has to, nobody, I don't need to be credited anywhere. However, um, I've been told by Stefan Schwartz, two universities in Europe would take it on immediately, and Dean Redden has told me that there's one university in Malaysia that would, then it was looking for something like that from the Noetic Institute. So let us go with your proposition that this is going to be resisted everywhere, which is fine by me. I, I have three universities that will probably be subversive enough to actually carry the, this, this science, and then I'm going to put it on the Internet. Once it's on the Internet, I want the, I want, oh, I have one other sheet you gave me. Volunteers needed. We want volunteers needed for a study. I want, I want to offer um, people in India to do a study on their own. Here, you know what? I, I, I'll, I'll fund it to 10000 bucks if some Indian organization will step up and do a study on reincarnation on their people using scientific means. There you go. But it's on the table. Let me know when you want to do it, and I march on. Okay? Um, I put it up, and then let them try and shut down my website. My gosh. My 10-year-old son, if I ever said to him, you can't look at this, I once got a $200 charge from a, um, an X-rated service, and he said it must have been the maids. <laughs> if, if you put it up there, they will find a way to disseminate it. And what's going to happen is that there are people like you all over the world who have nowhere to go for it. Now, that's part of my problem in dealing with this. Because so much of what I did was so alone for such a long time that sometimes, finally, when I have somebody who actually understands what I'm talking about, it's very hard to harness my own energy to try and, to try and calm it down. So 
I met a cab driver in Calgary who was a teacher in Pakistan who, who frankly, if he had this textbook, would backfill it to Pakistan. The, the, the view, the, the world view that you have with accredited teaching is actually an outdated view. And I would recommend the Abundance Book, which predates the Bold Book. Because in those two books, you have a structure of what exists in the coming world and how to disseminate information at little or no cost to fund it and to source it. NASA needed to, pre to, ca to catalog 50,000 uh, pictures of meteorites and they estimated it would take um, five years and $500,000. And they put it on the web and explained how to do it. And people that part time on their own cataloged all of them in eight weeks for no money. Now, I would, I would suggest that the strategies that are being used in some charitable organizations, if they were brought up to the level of world-class strategies to fund some of the things like the space telescope or some of the things that um, abundance, the, the, the SpaceX, they, they got $25 million and 100 teams competing to fund a lighter, a, an airplane that somebody could pedal around. And finally somebody won that. You could do similar kinds of things and the people to go to are the ones who are handling it are world class. So you're right, there's going to be a lot of resistors. Power structures are going to change because of this. It's going to be a wonderfully turbulent time. It's exciting. It's exciting that it, it's 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 exciting that, that you're at this moment, at the beginning of the century, and the paradigm shift is occurring, and we're here to see it and begin it. It's it's thrilling. So I don't I don't view the resistors as any opposition at all. In all honesty, I think if I need if I look at this generationally and I roll it out through three generations, I th I think you're going to eliminate a lot of war. And abu what Abundance says is the world, the world is getting better. Less people are fighting today than they were 100 years ago. This is how the paradigm, the new paradigm that I hear all my science friends talking about, is unfolding. This is part of what falls out. You actually get to realize what you already know, that this isn't the end, and we can start looking at this in a totally new and more productive and powerful way. And if you don't teach it, you're going to have the same thing happen that happened in the beginning of Germany. You're going to have two bad guys that's going to wipe it out. You got to put it. You got to put it in the textbook. You got to teach it. You you got to call it what it is. You're studying reincarnation, and you're going to get everything rolled in the neuroanatomy, the quantum um, biology. Uh, you'll have all the science facts, and you'll be able to see it happening physiologically. And once that occurs, the world will change. And what I just explained was how to accelerate your ability to do it and get more funding, both monetary and human resources. And I explained how that is going to change geopolitically and religiously and socially. And none of it is detrimental. You can send an ions agent into ISIS and convince them, right? So can I summarize this? I just want to be sure I get it. Uh, climate change, very similar issue. And there are people out there who believe what they believe regardless of the science. And so I think what I heard you telling me is uh, the naysayers or the ones who uh, don't believe in climate change because it doesn't match their theology or their worldview, um, they have to die. And, it's, and we have to take the three generations Am I, did I get that right? You conflated two things that are almost equal. There are many things that you said are right, but I don't have to wait three generations right. to change climate. There's, you simply can, we can go up and look at all the glaciers and we can watch them melt. And I think the preponderance of the evidence is now it's beyond a reasonable doubt. Whatever the category is, it's beyond a reasonable doubt that we've got global warming, and we're predicting that Miami will be a snorkeling destination by 2090. 
Uh, when the only, the only argument really is, are we doing it or is it normal? 17,000 years ago, the temperature went up 17 degrees, we had an ice age. We're having another one. I don't think it has anything to do with CO2. It's a totally, okay. it's a totally it's different not topic. Or anything. I'm just saying. I, 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 under, I understand. I want us to change everything and, and save two degrees. I don't give a shit. It's going up 17. It's going to be an entirely different place. See, How, so however, so however, be, the, 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 si the, science, the science on that is building to the point where the only opposition is those papers written by companies that are funded by gas and oil. Yep. So ultimately, this science, like climate change, is going to be upon us and there's nothing we can do. I want to thank you all for coming and I want to thank you for the good heads up on time. I want to say, you might not get everything he's saying because he's so exuberant, but he's really telling the truth.